torn apart, disassembled, divided, or broken up, it's common knowledge that many of the world's most iconic treasures did not survive the ravages of time perfectly intact. In fact, nowadays, many of humanity's most important relics only exist as small fragments. But while the objects got smaller, the prices certainly did not. Here are some of the most expensive splinters, segments, parts, and pieces that once belonged to famous historical artifacts. Splinters of the True Cross According to legend, in the year 326, St. Helena, the mother of Constantine I, discovered the wooden cross of Jesus while on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. To determine if it was the real thing, the Bishop of Jerusalem made a sickly woman touch it, upon which she was immediately cured. Over the next millennia, this holiest of Christian relics changed hands multiple times and was divided up into smaller fragments that were bought and sold. So numerous were they by the 16th century, though, that the theologian John Calvin would observe that there were probably enough pieces of the true cross to form an entire ship's cargo. In 1870, French scholar Joët de Fleury put this claim to the test. Estimating that the original cross weighed 165 pounds, was 3 to 4 meters high, and was 2 meters wide, de Fleury calculated its total volume to be 178 million cubic millimeters. Comparing it to the total volume of all existing splinters, 4 million cubic millimeters, he concluded that only a fraction of the true cross was actually in circulation. Nowadays, a tiny splinter, so small it requires a magnifying glass to see, can cost up to $975. Most recently, two wooden shards were even attached to the processional cross used in the coronation ceremony of King Charles III. Gutenberg Bible Fragment In the early 1450s, Johannes Gutenberg produced 180 copies of the Gutenberg Bible, the first major book to be printed using his printing press. After inspecting them, the future Pope Pius II was so impressed that in a letter to Cardinal Carhaval in Rome, he gushed how they were exceedingly clean and correct in their script, and without error, such as Your Excellency could read effortlessly without glasses. Even at the time of publication, the Gutenberg Bible was incredibly expensive, with one selling for 30 florins, the equivalent of 100 grams of gold. Today, only 49 copies of varying completeness remain, with a full edition estimated to be worth upwards of $35 million. As such, even small extracts of the Gutenberg Bible are worth a fortune. In 2015, an eight-page fragment containing the Book of Esther, the end of the Book of Judith, and the prologue of St. Jerome to Esther sold for a mind-boggling $970,000 exceeding its maximum estimated price by $270,000. It came from the Gutenberg Bible of New York book dealer Gabriel Wells, who in 1921 had sold off his copy page by page, selling a single leaf for $150 each. Not a bad return. Moon Rock Dust in 1969, Neil Armstrong made one small step for man by setting foot on the moon for the first time. While he was there, the trailblazing astronaut packed a small bag with moon rocks so he could bring them back to Earth, making it the earliest collected sample of the moon. In 2013, however, due to an administrative mix-up, the U.S. government accidentally sold this priceless space artifact which only contained traces of space dust, at an auction for $995 to private collector Nancy Carlson. Eager to find out which space flight the bag had been used on, Carlson sent it back to NASA for testing. Realizing their mistake, NASA refused to return the sample, declaring in a statement issued at the time that it belongs to the American people. However, in February 2017, a U.S. judge ordered NASA to return the cosmic cash to its private owner. While recognizing that the bag should never have been put up for auction, U.S. District Judge J. Thomas Martin found no legal reason for it to be withheld. Later that year, to much controversy, the bag was sold for $1.8 million to an anonymous buyer at renowned auction house Sotheby's. 
Meanwhile, at NASA, someone definitely got fired. The Apollo Ivory Mask The Ivory Mask is a life-sized hat of Apollo, the Greek god of the sun, that was taken from an extremely rare sculpture dating back to the 1st century BC known as a Chryselephantine statue. These statues were constructed around a wooden frame, with carved slabs of ivory plated over it to resemble skin, and thin sheets of gold leaf incorporated to represent clothes, armor, hair, and other details. Only 74 of these remarkable pieces of art were ever made, with experts believing the Apollo statue to have been carved by legendary Greek sculptor Phidias, who also created many of the marble reliefs on the Parthenon. Sadly, following the sack of Rome by barbarian warlord Alaric and the Visigoths in 410, these precious figurines completely vanished from the record, only surviving today as small pieces. In 1996, the Apollo mask was sold to private collector Nina Savoca for $10 million. In 2003, it was in the custody of disgraced London antiquities dealer Robin Symes, when it was discovered that the head had been illegally excavated and smuggled out of Italy via Switzerland. It is now the star attraction in an exhibition of looted antiquities that can be found at the Quirinale Palace in Rome. Clovis Point Arrowheads Around 13,000 years ago for a limited time, prehistoric arrowheads known as Clovis Points were produced by some of the earliest inhabitants of North America, the Clovis culture. In appearance, a Clovis point is distinguished by a fluted base near the bottom which helped it to clip onto the end of spear shafts, and curved sides that narrow into a sharp point. They are large, exquisitely crafted, and made out of a variety of unusual materials such as jasper, chert, and obsidian. On average, they are about 4-5 to five inches long and only 10,000 of them exist, making them objects of reference to collectors. Functionally, they were mostly used by hunter-gatherer tribes to take down mammoths and other large game animals. Since Clovis points can only really be found in North America, they have been hailed as the first true American invention. In 2013, a 9-inch Clovis point made from green obsidian discovered in the 1950s in Douglas County, Washington was auctioned off for $276,000. The arrowhead is the biggest example of its type ever found, and now holds the record for being the most expensive flaked stone artifact ever sold. Bits of the Berlin Wall On November 9, 1989, the government of East Germany announced that its citizens could freely cross over into West Berlin. From that date forward, the infamous Berlin Wall, a barrier that had divided Germany for 28 years, was gradually disassembled as the Cold War came to a close. At first, small pieces of the wall were chipped away by souvenir hunters. Then the government started to remove much larger segments to create new border crossings. By January 1990, the new German administration was selling 1.2-meter-wide sections for between $60,000 to $200,000. Of particular interest were the graffiti-strewn western sides of the wall, which were prized for their lavish street art. The company tasked with overseeing the trade, Limex, was well aware of this and was even known to touch up damaged graffiti to increase value. However, once the systematic demolition and disposal of the Berlin Wall was underway, prices plummeted. This was because they could now be purchased much more cheaply and, informally, from border guards and private companies hired to remove it. By March 2019, a four-segmented and two-segmented fragment only sold at auction for $12,000 and $5,000 respectively. For the average tourist, though, the wall chunks are still pricey bits of Cold War memorabilia, with extra-large pieces going for as much as 180 euros each at the Checkpoint Charlie Museum in Berlin. Nevertheless, the Berlin Wall remains a cautionary tale in regard to the marketplace for historical fragments, since its value actually decreased over time. In contrast, the rest of the fragmented treasures listed here will continue to command the highest prices for the foreseeable future, despite the incompleteness of their nature.